Welcome. You're listening to the Let's Get Engaged podcast. My name is Morgan, and I'm here to create content that educates, empowers, and inspires lifelong community engagement. I'll be bringing you in-depth interviews with nonprofits and community leaders so that you can make an impact in your community and around the globe. Now let's get engaged. Welcome to the first ever Let's Get Engaged podcast. I'm going to spend just a few minutes introducing myself, and then I'm going to tell you all about how I fell in love with nonprofits and community engagement. So I was technically born in Philadelphia, but I was raised in New Jersey. I've been an athlete all my life. I did softball, track, and field hockey, and I played field hockey into college in Roanoke, Virginia, which I'm going to dive into in just a moment because it led me to what I would probably consider to be the most influential class of my entire undergraduate career. So what I have for you here is a clip of an interview that I did with a good friend of mine, Alex, where she asks me about this very influential moment of my life. I was 19 years old, I'm a sophomore in college, and I was taking this really amazing class. They called it Traveling Without Leaving. And so the professor assigned us each to a social worker in the area, and then in turn, she connected us to a refugee family that had recently immigrated. And the idea was that we would help them assimilate to life in rural America, and they could ask us all sorts of questions, like uh, about going to the grocery store, or getting a driver's license, or anything that they were just dealing with in their normal struggles in their everyday life. And then in turn, we could ask them questions about life in Nepal and potentially gain some sort of cultural or social consciousness from a family that's experienced a life that's very different from our own. One of their stories that really stuck with me the most was about a time where they were in a refugee camp and they were basically starving already. And so the camp provided bananas as sustenance, but the family had never seen a banana before where they had grown up in rural Nepal. So without any instruction or any communication, um, so rather than peeling the bananas, they bit straight into them. And obviously that tasted terrible, and they gave away all their food to a surrounding family. And this broke my heart, and it really gave me a first-hand glimpse into all the structural and cultural inadequacies in our systems, like dealing with some of the most vulnerable populations on the planet. And I really had no idea a decade ago as a teenager just how important this experience would be moving forward with all the immigration issues that we are witnessing, the flux of people from South America in our instance, and everything going on in Europe, that these stories are more important now than ever. And it was really just a moment that changed the whole course of my life. And I really just decided right then and there to remain engaged with my community and working with nonprofits to help out any way I can. And from there, I was hooked. I just, I started working for Habitat for Humanity. I got really involved rebuilding the Northeast coastline after Hurricane Sandy blew through. And I think my favorite project was called the Campus Kitchen Project. I ran that for two years, which essentially is like a Meals on Wheels. But instead, they focus on using repurposed foods. And I think that's just so cool. And sustainability rocks. And I really just stayed involved for life. I've always considered myself an empathetic person and a helpful person. And I think part of that drive to help others comes from deep within me. I find a lot of other volunteers or other people who are called to action often feel the same, that there's some sort of a spark or some sort of an inspiration or something that happened in their lives that touched them deeply that made them decide to get involved. But at the end of the day, a lot of that drive does come from my upbringing. I come from a very close family, and I do believe that your environment determines your personhood in a lot of ways. So here is another clip from that same interview I had with Alex, where I discuss how my father inspired me. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, at the end of the day, the apple really does not fall far from the tree. 
So my father was a real inspiration to me, um, even fairly young when it came back to giving back to the community. He's just been volunteering at the Veterans Hospital in New Jersey for as long as I feel like I've been alive. He takes part in this amazing project called Musicians on Call, and they have artists come in and play music for people in hospice, and my father is the leader, and he brings them from room to room. So sweet. And I mean, he does all of this after a long day's work, you know, after driving potentially an extra 45 minutes out of his way, eating dinner in his car to make time for this. So really my father set a standard for me when it came to giving back. He's just the type of person that would go out of his way to snow blow and shovel the entire block sidewalks just to be a good neighbor. And he does all these things just to be kind. I mean, his goal is always to make people feel welcome despite their backgrounds, their religions, their, their wealth. You know, he treats everyone the same. And I'm sure he had no clue just how much I was paying attention to him. But he had a real influence on my decision to interact with the world the way I do. And it's funny how things like that can end up spilling into your, your career and your path in life like that. So let's fast forward a decade from that experience. And today I've had about eight to 10 years of nonprofit and fundraising experience under my belt. I've been an athletic coach for probably seven summers now, and I've got a little bit of experience teaching. And that I decided wasn't my jam, but honestly, shout out to all of the teachers out there. We say this all the time, but COVID-19 really put it into the spotlight, and that's that teachers are not paid enough, that's for sure. So nowadays, I'm working in nonprofit consulting, and in my spare time, I am working on this podcast. So let's get into the idea of what sparked the name Let's Get Engaged. It had always bothered me that so much of social media, and I mean just media in general, spends so much time focusing on things like athletics and politics or even just really superficial garbage topics like weight loss. And I wanted to figure out a way to put the spotlight on, you know, the little man. You know, the guy who is out there making a difference, but no one's mentioning the story in the news and it's not making the front page of the paper. So I was hoping when I created the name, Let's Get Engaged, it was meant to fill you with all that fun and fuzzy feelings that you might get when you hear about engagements or weddings, but then you suddenly realize that it's a play on words and it's actually about community engagement. And, you know, maybe it'll make you click on it and maybe it'll make you listen to it. And it's just something that I'm really passionate about. And that's something that I'm just really excited to start sharing all of these different stories and experiences with all of you. That's you, nonprofits and community leaders. I'm here to provide you a free platform where you can spread the word about your mission, announce any upcoming events or fundraisers, maybe give a call to action or request volunteers. Or perhaps you're just trying to share an important story. Whatever you need, Let's Get Engaged wants to support you. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Send us a message or an email if you're interested in being featured. Again, that's Let's Get Engaged Podcast with Let's Get Engaged Podcast at gmail.com. We're here to help you stay engaged with the community to those neighbors, local and global. My name is Morgan, and I cannot wait to share our first real episode with you. So I won't. Our first episode will feature the Future Savers Initiative. They are a Nigerian non-governmental organization, and they focus mostly on climate change projects and education. I'll be chatting with the founder, Shay Ransom, and he's going to tell you all about their plans for Earth Day. This is the Let's Get Engaged podcast, encouraging you to get involved locally, globally, today, tomorrow, and forever. Thank you for listening. I'd also like to give a shout out to Foria for their song Breakaway on our first episode of Let's Get Engaged. Thanks, Foria.